Hey guys, just wanting to point out a couple of things uh, on my electric fan setup I've done on my LS. I just wanted to take a little video and and uh, see how I had it set up, and I'll put some links on the actual items I bought. Um, if you can see here, I took the shroud off, so you, or the covers. So you can see this shroud is. You need to get your aluminum shroud. I got this off eBay. I think it was, um, I think it was over 50 bucks. Uh, and uh, the important thing is to buy a high quality fan because you don't want to have to be in here doing this every other year when the fan decides to crap out on you. Um, it's going to cost you probably to do this the way I have my setup, but probably about 500 bucks. But it's half the price of a hydraulic setup new, and I, my opinion works better. But uh, get a spiral fan, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's SPAL. I have links to those too when I show this video. <clears throat> I can't remember the exact size. I'm wanting to say 17 inch, but it could be a 16. It's somewhere between there. Um, it has to be a specific type of fan that actually sucks air versus pushing it. Um, I'm going to try to show you the sensor. Now, the the controller for this I ordered from California. It's around two, it's a little over 200 bucks. It uses a uh, sensor that goes at your lower radiator hose, which I'm trying to focus on here. Let me get the camera down there at it. You can see it there, it has a copper adapter, which is why it's turning green. Um, and that sensor reads the temperature and sends it to the controller and it will adjust the fan speed through the ground of the fan, not the power through the ground. And um, depending on what your temperature is, and it also has a toggle switch you can install and do a manual override, which will make the fan run um, constantly at high speed if you need to uh it's a two wire sensor which has to be fed the wire has to be fed into the car uh, i'll show you that in a second uh, now the uh the other important thing here is to not cheat or skimp on wiring i went through a couple trial and errors with this and the sweet spot is six gauge wire. You don't need six gauge on the ground, but you need, you know, a decent size wire, you know, something like a 10 gauge or something. But for the power, I used a six gauge wire. And you can see right here where I have it on this distribution block, the main power is in the middle post. And then your power for the fan will bolt into one of those four screw or those eight screws there. You, Okay, the power wire is running into a fuse that you can see here. It's a fuse link. And I'm thinking it's 40 amp. And then you run that wire. I snaked mine along the AC line here and, and wire strapped it. And it goes down and boats into the main power of the starter where on your starter wire. Because that's the main power source that's closest to the fan. <laughs> And the ground wire for the fan, I had to take this cowl loose and, and your PCM is underneath your cabin air filter there. And I ran the, the ground into the inside the car underneath the PCM. And I'll show you that now. This is the controller, which I have tucked out here so you can see a good look at it. Um, it has a adjustable sensitivity. Mine seems to be working the best on around 11 o'clock, and yours should too if you get the same setup. So that kind of gives you a little heads up on where to, where to set the adjustment is. Is if you think of a clock, you know, it's set on about 11 o'clock. The wiring for this uh, controller is pr pretty simple. Uh, you have two wires that comes in from the sensor. You have a power wire that powers the uh, controller. And, and and the ground for it and uh the other wire is for it for the uh toggle switch override which i installed here 
in the uh, beside the e-brake and if, if I flip that you know he hit, hit cuts the fan on and it and works that overrides the controller now the ground wires if I can raise this up and let you look at it for the fan is here you bridge if you look here I have E1 and E3 bridged because this is it's we're actually control two fans so I bridged E1 and E2 and then the ground for the fan goes in the middle I'm sorry I bridged E1 and E3 and then the ground wire for the fan is goes in the middle post there and, and that runs directly up to the fan and that's pretty much the setup on that now the the power wire here I ran for this controller I ran in I'm wanting to say I tapped into the uh, probably the radio power or something that was you know um, that was easy and, and something I won't have to worry about you you don't want to uh, probably tap into something you know that it uses a lot of amperage like your um, like your heater fan or something like that to get it on something that's right you know that doesn't use a lot of amperage and then I just I could have butted this in there but it's pretty it's it's pretty snug when it goes in I just set it right here because there's and I just tuck it in there and put my cover back on there and it, it kind of sits there it doesn't rattle too much when I get it settled in like that right there I've never had a problem out of it in two years and um, that's pretty much it guys you just uh that's that's how I have the fan set up on there, and I'll, I'll I'll have the links to everything that you need to buy. You're looking at about 500 bucks for everything, um, but that's a lot cheaper than a grand for the hydraulic system. The last I saw, it's how much they wanted for it, and uh, if you can even still get it. Uh, one other thing I want to point out the the old fan shroud. Um. What I done on the on the evaporator here is I just wire tied it to my radiator bracket here that holds it in place. It's kind of crude, I know. I could have done a little effort and probably made a bracket, but it's it just sits there. And once you put this cover on, you don't see it anyway. So unless you're showing the car like at a car show, it's, and even then, like I said, with that cover, it goes on here that I took off, so y'all can see this better. Um, it's not no big deal. So. Um, and the uh yeah it's worked fine for two after after i finally got the wiring issue what what it was i was using eight gauge wire and after a while it would it would draw too much amperage for that and it would heat up and make the the uh fuse either fuse link blow or or something else this distribution block is a is the real deal um if you just go from a six gauge wire and say you crimp on that six gauge to your other wire that could sit up corrosion after a while or heat or something i I just tend to think this is this is a better way of doing it and i've never had a problem with it since i've done this and this little distribution block's not very expensive the copper fittings you see there i crimped on using a tool that you can get on ebay um or you could probably take it to some kind of uh ac place they may have uh well they do lines uh, custom lines i may have a way creeping that for you so you don't have to uh buy that too if you don't need to it was maybe 25 bucks and i put i create one on this end of the six gauge wire and one on the other end which spokes to the starter post and uh that was pretty much that's pretty much the, the setup guys I and mean, i'll post the links to everything if anybody has any questions you're welcome to list them there on the post uh now for the bypass on the um on the fan pump what i done i had to uh take all this apart anyway and uh, redo the timing chains which is a must on a 2000-2002 ls it ain't if you have to do it it's when you have to do it so most people just put the uh tensioners on top i went ahead and put a complete timing chain kit so what time I had that in there to uh, take that time machine cover off the, the pump, the fan pump on this side and your pairing steering pump fan stuff on this side on the pump actually has to come loose. So what time I had that off, I went ahead and just ditched the whole pump on this side. I suppose you could leave it, if, but I wouldn't personally. But what you have to do, 
you see this pulley right here I'm pointing at on a this is a V8 uh, originally that's smooth and if you can tell that's a ribbed pulley which comes off the V6 actually um, and hits a direct bolt on you just remove the smooth pulley and then bolt this rid one on there and you route that belt which would be a shorter 100 inch belt and I'll I'll give the uh, I'll have the links to all this stuff at the video bottom of the video I don't know if I can get a good picture of how I routed that belt but most of the routing is like it was you just you know loop the belt over the top of this pulley here and you can see how it runs down to the alternator from there I'll try to not move this video around so much so you can kind of see how I got it routed that's really the only change you got to do uh, once you get is to uh, replace this smooth pulley with a with this red one so you can route this belt over the top and uh, that's, that's how I had the fan set up, the fan belt set up.